Okay, now it's time to look more closely at big numbers. You already know that astronomy deals with really big numbers, and you're probably familiar with these ones. A thousand, a million, a billion, maybe even a trillion if you keep track of things like federal budget discussions. But in astronomy, those aren't really big numbers. Here's a big number, the mass of the sun. In kilograms, it's a two followed by 30 zeros. That's ridiculous. Nobody wants to be writing out numbers like that. Let's look at how we come up with a shorter way of writing something like this. We'll start with a smaller number, the astronomical unit, or 150 billion meters. Notice all of those zeros. Those are really just placeholders to tell you that it's not just 15 meters. Each zero is really a way of saying times 10. So if we wanted to, we could take this number and rewrite it 15 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 and so on, 10 times. This would be a lot of work and it would violate an important principle of math and science. The principle is this, mathematicians and scientists are fundamentally lazy people. After all, if we weren't, we'd probably go out and get a real job. So the last thing we're going to do is write things out the hard way. So here's the trick. We take all those times tens and compress them down into just one, with a little number up top called the exponent. Since we started with ten zeros, the exponent tells us that you multiply times ten a total of ten times. So that 150 billion meters is now 15 times ten to the tenth power meters. We're almost done. There is just one more change we need to make. We like to write these things with just one digit to the left of the decimal place. To do that, we have to turn the 15 into 1.5. Since we're taking out a factor of 10, we need to put it back in somewhere else. So we put it in the exponent. That gives us 1.5 times 10 to the 11th power meters. As I just mentioned, the little number above the 10 is the exponent. The number out front is called the coefficient. Now we can take this same idea and apply it to the sun's mass from the last page, that 2 followed by 30 zeros. Go back and have a look at that number and see if you can write it out in exponential form. When you've got it, just click forward and I'll give you the answer. Are you ready? Here's the answer. The mass of the sun is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Did you get it, and did you remember to include the units? If you didn't get the answer, go back and have another look at the number and the definition of exponents and make sure you understand how to get this one right. There's another thing I'd like you to understand about numbers like this. The exponent is the important part of the number. Compare 2 times 10 squared, which is 200, with 2 times 10 to the third, which is 2,000. We've just changed the exponent by 1, but the number gets 10 times bigger. So when you're working with numbers in this course, it's really important that you get the exponent right. Getting the coefficient right is good also, but even a small problem with the exponent means your answer is way off. Now that we know what exponents are, we can talk about how to work with them. If this were a math class, we'd spend a lot of time working on all of the rules for doing addition and multiplication and so on with exponents. But we don't have time to go through all of that here. If you know the rules and want to apply them, then you should feel free to do so. But in fact, a lot of the time, scientists simply calculate these things on their calculators, so we can do that here. But this means that you need to know how to enter an exponent on a scientific calculator. There are many ways to put exponents into a calculator, and most of them are wrong. I'm going to tell you the right way. Let's try the number we were just working with, 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. Here's how you put that into a calculator. First, you type in the coefficient, 1.5. Then you have to do one of the hardest things in this course. It has to be difficult because some folks never manage to do this part. You have to stop yourself from clicking on the times key. 
If you've ever seen the old movie Dr. Strangelove, it looks like that, with people grabbing their own hands and saying, no, you mustn't press that button. Instead, look for a key labeled either EXP or EE. Most brands of scientific calculator have one or the other of these. You press that button instead. And not only does it do the times, it also gets the 10. From there, all you need to do is put in the exponent, 11 in this case. So to sum up, to type in 1.5 times 10 to the 11, just type in 1.5, EE or EXP, then 11. Isn't that easy? Now that we've got an exponent in the calculator, we can do something with it. Neptune is 30 astronomical units from the Sun, so let's figure out how many meters that is. We multiply 1.5 times 10 to the 11th by 30. So make sure you've got 1.5 times 10 to the 11th in the calculator, and then just hit times 30 and see what answer you get. Hit the mouse button when you're done. Do you have your answer? Your calculator may read something like this. 4.5 and then a 12 after it. When you see this, you should write it out as 4.5 times 10 to the 12th power. If you get something else, then go back through the instructions and try it again. Also, when you do have the right answer, don't write it out as 4.5 to the 12th power. That means something completely different, and it will be marked wrong. There's Bruce popping in to remind us that not entering the exponents into the calculator properly and writing down the answer incorrectly are two of the most common mistakes students make with the math. So be sure you can do this right. Okay, it's time to start looking at really small numbers. We see those in astronomy too. Here's a really small number you'll see more of later on. 0 0.0000000067. Once again, we'd like an easy way to write a number like this, and we're going to use exponents here as well. The trick is that with small numbers, the exponent is negative. We still want to write the number with one digit to the left of the decimal, so it should start with 6.7. That means we need to move the decimal 11 places. So we write this number 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11. This is the general rule with exponents. The exponent tells you how far the decimal had to move. And if the exponent is positive, it's a big number. Well, if the exponent is negative, it's a small number. The more negative, the smaller the number. Lastly, we need to put this number into the calculator. This works just like with positive exponents, except that you need to add one more step. You have to get that negative sign in there. So don't use the subtraction key on your calculator. That will give you an error. Instead, look for either a plus minus key or a negative sign in brackets. Just plug that in right before the exponent and it should work fine. So if you want to enter 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11, you type 6.7 EE or EXP, and then the plus minus or negative key, and finally the exponent 11. It's fine to do your exponent calculations on a calculator, but there is one trick you can do that will help you catch some of the most common mistakes people make when they use their calculators to work with exponents. The way you do this is by noticing something interesting about the way exponents work. When you multiply two numbers that are written in exponential notation, then the exponent in the answer is the sum of the exponents you multiplied. So if you multiply 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 8th, the answer will be 10 to the 13th. You can do something similar when you divide numbers with exponents. In this case, you subtract the exponents. For example, if you divide 10 to the 5th by 10 to the 8th, then the answer will be 10 to the minus 3. This makes sense, because 10 to the 8th is a lot bigger than 10 to the 5th. So the answer should be less than 1, and that's what a negative exponent gives us. Here's one more example. 
this time with coefficients and a negative exponent thrown in. Notice that we subtract the exponents, but the second exponent is negative. Since when we subtract a negative, it's like adding a positive, the answer comes out to be 10 to the 10th. Finally, notice that when we put the coefficient in the standard form with just one digit in front of the decimal, this also changes the exponent by one. That's something else to watch for. The exponent could change by one or two because of what the coefficient is doing as well.